The travelling salesman is a famous mathematical problem. It's a, it's a huge problem, actually. And it's very, very relevant, not just for salesmen. The kind of, um, the kind of topics, mathematical topics, subject areas that it's under, um, you can classify it a couple of ways. You can call this an optimization problem, and you'll see why in a second. And it also fits under a particular kind of branch of maths called graph theory. Now, by the way, can I just say, it's called graph theory, but it almost has nothing to do with what you think of when you think of graphs, okay? And I will explain a little more. In fact, we're gonna draw some graphs on here, as we said, okay? So let me give the traveling salesman to you, uh, the problem to you, in a nutshell, okay? <coughs> These dots that you've got here, okay? They are locations, like cities, for example, okay? And there is a salesman, let's put him over here. There's a salesman. Yes, it is compulsory to put a salesman there, okay? There's a salesman, and he wants to visit. Yeah, he's traveling, I suppose, so I'll give him, I'll give him a suitcase. <laughs> okay. Depends what kind of salesman he is, right? His task is to visit, travel to all the cities but because he's a salesman, he's trying to be cheap and efficient, he wants to travel to all the cities in the fastest time or the lowest distance possible. So this problem in other regions of the world is called the Asian salesman. Okay, now, um, he wants to get to all the points as quickly as possible. Now, you may remember we had a look at um, other problems which have this kind of graph theory. You need to visit certain different places that bent uh, of a problem. Okay, so we're going to dig into that a little more deeply. But here's what I want you to do, okay? You've got um, either two or four copies of this set of cities, okay? What I want you to do is, independently, on your own, um, and with a ruler would be helpful, um, if you've got one. Unfortunately, I've only got a few with me. With a ruler would be helpful because obviously, if, for instance, I want to go from here to here, clearly the fastest path from one to the other is a straight line, okay? So, I mean, you can draw a decent straight line probably freehand, but if you have a ruler, it'll be even better. And we're going to be measuring these things, okay? So I want you to, uh, and you can start wherever you like, by the way, I've just happened to start him up there, my one up there. You can start anywhere you like. The only condition is you need to travel to all the cities. And you want to minimize distance, right? So I'd like you to independently start anywhere you like and see how efficiently you can do it. Now, just give it a shot. Don't worry about trying to rework it and rework it. You will, but on separate pieces of... Um, the map, which is why I give you so many copies, okay? So I'll give you a few minutes, try it out, and then measure out the distance in millimeters. Off you go. I'm going to show you some strategies for solving this problem. It's a great little problem. Um, the question was given to me, is there a formula for this? Is there a formula? And the answer is, no, there is not, which is why all of the methods I'm about to show you, it's why they exist in the first place. By the way, um, I did say this just informally, but this problem, right, of a salesman, the actual problem, and the reason why this is like legit, mathematically significant, is that this is exactly what data does if um, we replace our traveling salesman with like, oh, I don't know, like a video. Google, okay, right? And then there's, you know, your, um, your laptop computer, wow, that's a terrible drawing, anyway. Your computer there, I'm just gonna get rid of it and just say computer. Because, save myself the embarrassment. Your data, right, cannot physically go directly from you to Google. Because there is not just one wire, one really, really long wire cable, joining you to their servers. In fact, you have to communicate with, well, it'll be your local exchange. There's like a, depending on what kind of internet you use then that's going to communicate to like whatever, Telstra or TPG or whatever. Okay. Oh yeah, I forgot. Like from you to your router, then to your exchange, then to your ISP, then to what we call the, um, there's a, gl not global, there's a, um, a coastal set of stations basically that send pipes underneath the ocean. It gets to the US and then once it gets to the US, it's got to do the same journey in reverse till it gets to Google. Now, there are hundreds and thousands and millions of different paths that can be taken, right? That we just haven't drawn in, okay? So this problem, this 
optimizing for the shortest path, right, is actually of enormous mathematical significance. Okay. So let's think about this. Now, the method that you did just now, okay, and I think I believe the lowest number we got was two seventy seven. Did anyone beat two seventy seven? Two seventy six. Two seventy six. Well, now we have gotta be careful. That's just dodgy. Really. We have to be careful because that's correct. Um, there's a. We re do you remember limits of accuracy? Yeah, you've got yeah, yeah, you've yeah. got rulers, and they're only so accurate, right? So I think we're gonna call two seventy six and two seventy seven equal winners. Okay. Um, I don't know about you, but the path I took this was the first path that I drew. Okay. It was basically. It was basically guesswork. Like I just kind of looked at what it looked like and I tried to intuitively guess out a path. Okay? Now, I was asked a very clever question before, which is actually very insightful. The question was, do we have to return back to where we started? Now the answer was no, because you have to you just have to visit all the cities, that's all you have to do. But but actually drawing out the whole thing and joining it back up actually will help you reduce your answer. Have a think about this, right? I've now closed off my loop, okay? So I have a complete path back to the beginning, right? Now, the path that I didn't have before was this one here. I started here and I ended here. But being that I don't have to return to the beginning, I can remove any one of these paths, any one I like, because I don't have to start and end at the same spot. So for instance, would I choose a path like this to get rid of? And the answer is no, because I don't have much to gain by getting rid of this one. It looks to me on my path, and yours might be different. I'm guessing it's going to be one of these, right? One of these looks like it's the longest. Yeah, maybe the top. So you can see, by getting rid of this guy, I have now actually shaved something off of my path. I haven't measured it, because this is not millimeters anyway. But you get the idea. So maybe you want to scrutinize your answer a little bit more, and see if you can reduce it just by changing your starting point. 